Today, I am joined by the incredibly talented and inspiring Jeffrey Cornelius. Jeffrey is an incredible actor, singer, and musician. He is currently the Evan alternate on the national tour of my favorite musical, Dear Evan Hansen. Thank you so much, Jeffrey, for joining me on The Inspiration Show. It's such an honor to have you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you. Yay! Do I have your permission to post this episode of The Inspiration Show on social media? Yes. Thank you. So when did you discover that you had a passion for the arts? Um, so my family is a very like musical, um, like, like family, like the arts are like, it's kind of like, if you're not, if you're not going to baseball practice, you're going to piano lessons. Mm -hmm. Like it's either one or the other. Um, and so I was doing both when I was really little, but, um, very quickly, I was like, I started piano lessons when I was like four or five. Um, and I kept playing from there. And I think when I was in like first or second grade, there's, we have one professional theater in Mississippi where I'm from it's called New Stage Theater. Shout out to them. They taught me everything, you know. Um, but they, um, they were doing a children's show and it was Miss Nelson is Missing. And I saw this lady named Sharon Miles perform as Mrs. Nelson. And after the show, I went up to her and I was like, hey, I want to do what you do. How do I do that? And she was like, okay, come back come back this summer and we'll get you into camp. And um, I snuck my way into the big kids Broadway junior camp and then I, the rest is history. Um, I kind of like, I did my first show. Um, and then from there I kind of worked at that theater during the year when they weren't doing like their educational stuff. But I think discovering, as far as discovering it was a passion, I think it was just kind of always what I did. And then eventually I was like, oh, I guess this is what I can do for my life. Because I, I just always had fun doing it. It was just always fun for me. Yeah. It's so special when you discover a passion for such a young age and then you realize, hey, I can do this my entire life. And you go through it and like, look where you are now. It's so crazy. Oh, it, and it like it it is truly like like going into this like field and this like art form, truly like the biggest crapshoot with like every job you ever auditioned for. So I'm just really grateful to be here. Um, especially like with how long my audition process for the show was and like, like, like being a fan of the show first and like really wanting to be in it. Yeah. Well, it's so special. So what would you really say inspired you to become a performer and who has been an inspiration of yours throughout your career? Um, so my uncle, who's a composer, he writes musicals. Um, he, he, he's the one that got me into musicals. Um, he, he kind of, instilled in me like from a young age, like the work ethic I think I have and my parents were very much like, you can't quit anything until you're really good at it. So um, they would make, I never stopped going to piano lessons my whole time growing up. Um, I ended up learning how to play nine instruments mm -hmm. because they were very much like, what else can you do? You wanna do something else? Um, but yeah, I, um, wait, I'm sorry, I, I forgot the question. No, you got it, just your inspirations. Oh yeah, inspirations. Also Sharon Miles, the lady who um, got me into theater. She gave me my first job as a teacher, um, as a summer camp theater instructor. And actually while I was teaching at that summer camp, I was doing my Zoom callbacks for Dear Evan Hansen in the light booth in between sessions on camp days. Um, and my professors at school at CCM, um, they have really inspired me to like kind of figure out like, like singing, dancing, acting cool, we can do that. That's what we're kind of expected to do in musical theater, but what makes you stand out and what makes you you? They have kind of instilled in me in my class, like, like, like only sticking to what we know we do best and honing the things that aren't the best at that moment in time. And then being our own unique, like unicorn individual person, I think. I hope that made sense. I'm like oh. speaking out the side of my neck. No, I love it because I think it's so special because with each performer, they're so unique because of course you have like your triple threats, the dancing, the singing, the acting, but what each performer can bring to the stage or to a rehearsal or to an audition, it's so special to see how, because like everyone does the same thing, everyone has the same passion, but to see how everyone does it differently in their journeys, it's so special. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's why you go to the theater to see different people play the role. It's like everybody is so vastly different but we're still coming together and we're like doing the same show that's written the same way the music's the same way everything's the same but it's all totally different 
And I think that's 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 the really cool thing about the theater. Yeah, that's what I love because I've seen Evan Hansen countless times and I've seen so many incredible people step into the role. And to know that you're all given the same script, you know, you're singing the same lyrics, but when people emphasize different things or like they change their tone or they even do the slightest little thing, it changes it so much. And it's just yeah. so special to see how actors, you know, bring themselves into the role and just the little changes that they make it and how they make it their own. It's just amazing. And it, and it, and it, and it keeps you like on your toes. It keeps you wanting to like, mm -hmm. makes you, it makes you want to come back to the show. Each, yeah. Each night. Yeah. And I love it because I personally think I know the show very well. So when I see the changes that people make, I was like, oh, I really like what they did there. I've never seen that before. I like the emphasis on this line and like each character has like a different backstory. And what I've realized and that I love hearing about is the actors make the backstories for their characters too. So to hear about that and to kind of know a little glimpse of what's running through their heads when they're on stage telling this story, it's so cool because it's exactly the same, like we said, but it can be so different no matter the way you approach it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, can you take us back to the first time that you experienced theater and how you're feeling at the time? The first time I ever experienced theater, I can tell you exactly where I was. Um, I was in elementary school. Um, and I remember we were out of school because there was like a boiled water alert or something. And my grandparents were like, we have a surprise for you. Get dressed, get ready to go at 6.30 at night. So my parents got me all dressed up and we showed up to, um, we have a touring house in Jackson. Um, and there, there was a tour of, I think the Wizard of Oz there um and I loved that movie as a child like who wouldn't it was like singing yeah. and like wonderful colors and beautiful things um but my grandparents took me to see the Wizard of Oz um I sat in like the fourth row and I remember like I, like the show started my jaw dropped and I don't think it came like up off of the ground until the show was over in intermission included yep intermission I, my, my nana tells a story all the time with me like I I was still really little so you know how little kids like to do the thing where they like sit on their knees and like talk to so like trying to look at them in the eye she said I was like I would not stop moving and wrestling in my chair and I was asking her all these questions about the show and she's like I don't know I don't know I don't. and she was like she knew then she's like he's gonna be an actor she's like this week. yeah I love that I mean I'm the same because I'm such a theater nerd so like I know so many facts and like so many things about the actors in the show and I just love telling people and I won't shut up when it comes to you know telling people about the show especially with Evan Hansen yeah 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 I don't know what, I don't know, but I love it. I, I think it's cool to know what's happening. Yeah, yeah. And it's also, it's also really cool to talk to people who know a lot about like what you're doing, but kind of are like kind of removed from it too. Like my friend Franco um, is, he's going to be the Evan alternate in Argentina, but we went no to school. No way. Yeah, That's we went. That's crazy. We went to school together. He's one of my best friends. We did all of the shows together that, that one year we went to school together because um, I'm not obviously not in person at school this year. But um, he's he's the Argentinian alternate, and we were like talking about like the character. We were talking about the character the other day, but then he started talking about like the things they're doing in their production because it's like a totally different production. And I was like, oh, that's new. That's new. Yeah. Oh yeah, you and I are going to Argentina to see that. Yeah, no, I'm actually really thinking about it. I really wonder what changes they made because I was telling Ian when he was on the show and he didn't know. Um, yeah. Some of the, they make changes, or I was also telling Jill when she was on, that they make changes to the show. Like when the show was in Toronto, they cut out Trader Joe's dumplings. We don't right. have Trader Joe's. Yeah. Well, I feel like we should do that in some cities too, because we were in two cities before this. The two cities in Texas don't have Trader, Trader Joe's in them. So that joke went over, went over everybody's head and they're like, what is that? <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. I love the small little changes that they make for each different city. I'm excited to get that line back in Buffalo. Yeah, Good one. yeah. no, yeah, because <laughs> Trader Joe's soup dumplings, every time I get to that part of the show, she's like, we have this, because me, Jeffrey, naturally, there's four boxes of Trader Joe's dumplings in that um, freezer over there that I'm looking at right now. Um, so that's the biggest acting challenge of the night for me, pretending like I don't want to eat those. <laughs> I love that. So when you were younger, you were accepted into the academic 
and Performing Arts Complex program, and you learned how to play multiple instruments while working towards your education. Shout out to your mom, love her. You also went on to star in many productions such as High School Musical. What was your experience like studying at APAC as well as participating in these productions? And do you feel that they've impacted you and helped shape you into the actor that you are now? Shout out Jeffrey as, as Ryan. In that Ryan, I, the picture is somewhere in my phone. So the shout out to APAC first and foremost, because um, New Stage Theater, APAC, and CCM are who I owe everything to. Um, APAC um, was kind of like, um, it was an academic, like an accelerated academic program, but also we had an art school that you would go to. So it was this like square block downtown in Jackson where the elementary school and the art school were in one. The middle school was up on the top of the hill and at the bottom of the hill was a high school. Um, so I spent every year from fourth grade in that building. Every day, I was in that building every day and I was in the music program until I was a senior. And in the music, the music program, honestly, I'm gonna shout out the music program at APAC. Shout out Power APAC. Oh yeah. Um, the music program was really rigorous. I was a cello major, so to speak. So I came in every day and I would go to orchestra class, but alongside like your major, half the day was spent in the major and then like two, three times a week, you would rotate to all the other teachers in the music department. And one of those teachers was teaching by high school, she was teaching a AP music theory. Um, if you were in the level three, which I was in, um, sorry, not to brag. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just had to make that joke. It was always a joke amongst us. Like, yeah, I got, I got it. Yeah. But, um, I was, I was in level three. So I was like taking AP music theory, like, like an advanced, like college sight singing class in the lady who, ta who taught the voice majors. And then, and then like a college level music history class. Jeffrey does everything. It was so hard. It was, I, I think it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life because you would go and do that for half of the day and then you had to go to the academic part of it. And like, I'm specifically thinking, speaking about middle school and high school, I started taking high school classes, seventh grade and middle school. So yeah. they were kind of like, that's why, I, and I ended up graduating high school a year early because like they like allowed us to stack up so many credits while we were there. So we all kind of were given the option. But APAC, okay, now that I'm really thinking about it, APAC really kind of did that because they also, they gave me, it taught me how to like work with all types of people as well. Because um, orchestra in particular, um, I had the unique experience of like, up until I was a cello major, I was always a cello major. And I started, when I started, I was like second chair, I would rotate between second and I, sorry, I thought somebody knocked on the door. I would rotate between second and first chair. And then I got to middle school and everybody's really good at middle school. And so I was like last chair, second to last chair, third to last chair. And that's kind of where I sat for a little bit. And then I got to high school and I was like, okay, buckling down. This last chair thing, embarrassing. Now I want to be first chair. Um, and so I finally got my first chair in high school. Um, and then our basis, we only had one basis, she left. And they were like, who can pick up instruments fast? And they looked around Everybody the room. can play and nine. <laughs> of course they looked at me. And so I had to learn how to play the classical double bass. My um, senior year in high school, after I, I had switched majors, okay? Switched over to theater, but they were still leasing. They were like, they were loaning me over to play in their concerts so that they had a bassist. So I was, school taught me how to hop around and be like flexible and like bend over backwards and like do two shows in like high school and also be in the orchestra and go compete with the orchestra during the weekend and then go back to the theater competition the next weekend and then have to shut everything down. Yeah. Oh my God, because I was going to say, I was an art student. I'm in my first year of high school, but for elementary school, we do all the arts. We do dance, drama, music, art, and I'm like a dancer and an actor. So for high school, that's when you like pick your section, if you will. So I went into theater and it's just crazy, you know, having to juggle all the four different arts and, you know, now really getting to pick, it's not like a major, but like a major. And I just can't imagine what that was like for you, you know, having to juggle the academic part with all those different majors. That's crazy. And also the thing is, looking back on it, honestly, I don't know why I was ever a cello major. Uh, Cause I literally like, well, I know why now. And I'm very thankful that I was, but like every year I was like, literally, I was working at the regional theater with the lady who was the theater teacher, but I wasn't in the theater program. So it was always a really funny, like, hey. Oh yeah, out of all the instruments you play, which one's your favorite? I'm putting you on the spot here, I'm sorry. Well, right now on tour, since I don't have my cello with me, it's kind of 
piano. I've been doing like a score of the week because since I've been playing piano since I was four, I I used to like music direct a lot of stuff at school. And I used to like learn scores and like play through them and sing through them with my friends like us theater nerds do. Um, so I think right now it's piano just because um, it's the most easily accessible yeah. here on the road. But I also travel with my guitar. My guitar's like right behind me. I love oh, yeah. my little guitar. Um, I also just bought a melodica today. So um, it's gonna be at the theater when I get there and I'm very excited. Oh yeah, you know what you should do when you're not on? You should go up to the pit and just like, you know, <laughs> hop on cello or something. I, I actually have a dream. Well, actually I, I have like a recurring nightmare that <laughs> one day our cellist is going to get sick and they're going to have to be like, Jeffrey, can you play the show? <laughs> And if that opportunity were to arise for me, do you know what I would say? I would say yes. I, I want to see you do it. Also, like, I would want to know what, like, special, like, what call would have to be made to, like, what union for me to, like, get permission to do that. Because also, yeah, because I think about that and I also think about what if both of our conductors got sick and the only person that could play the show in the building was, was either me or, like, a stage manager. Because, like, the conductor in this show like literally cues like half of the show because yeah. we have this like you know about the ableton the pedal the everything yep gosh i like i i sat in the pit um we were closing out chicago our cellist tahira who is she's one of the most um she's our old cellist she's one of the most beautiful people inside and out she's so freaking bright and talented it was her last show because she was leaving us in chicago so i sat in the pit and i was observing with my headphones on and I was looking at Garrett, our music director, like triggering all these cues. He's literally like playing this like crazy hard Alex Lackamore part. Like two, one pedal is on the sustain. The other one is literally triggering light cues and sound cues. And I'm like, how are you doing this every yeah. night, twice a day sometimes? It, it's such a multitask. The entire show, it's crazy. So many people have to be working all on the exact same page for the show yeah. to go up without a hitch. And I'm yeah. like, how do y'all it's crazy how they are able to communicate so well to me. And it's crazy because also the Evan rule, if I'm not mistaken, that only one, you can only go on once a day for Evan, right? That's, that's like a rule, right? It's kind of like an unwritten rule. I think only like two people have ever like had to like go on twice a day. And it was, I remember Stephen, Jess, Jess, yeah. who was, um, she's the lady who, she's our, she's our hair and makeup lady. Um, she told us Stephen had to go on once, twice in a day for Evan. And I think Ben Platt did it before the Tonys. And then after the Tonys, they introduced the alternate. Oh my goodness. This show is crazy, but it's the best. I love it. It is. This show makes me, I like, I get giddy every time I'm about to go on. Like I sit in my chair with my little polo and cast on. I'm like, it's iconic. I love it. So now we are hopping on time machine because we're going to March, 2019. So you were invited to perform in a showcase hosted by Scenebot Stage Live in Los Angeles. Yes. Your mom is incredible yes. this information. So after the showcase, this is when you realized that you wanted to pursue your craft. And like you said, you graduated from high school a year early. So can you share with us a little bit about the showcase and then take us back to after the showcase when you realized, okay, this is what I wanna pursue. This is what I wanna do. Okay, so that showcase, Scenebot, is where I met one of my best friends in the world. Shout out to Morgan Dudley, Broadway's own. Um, we we um, did that same showcase together, and it was also hosted by this lady named Catherine Steele, who, like, everybody that has ever done, like, like everybody from, like, my generation that was, like, auditioning for college knows who this lady is, because she used to make, like, videos about, like, auditioning for college and, like, what it's like to be a professional actor and stuff like that. But um, Scenebot... Um, got gave me the opportunity to sign with this agency based in Los Angeles called DDO Artists Agency. Um, they're a wonderful, wonderful agency, and they represented me so, so, so very well. Um, and I went in for a lot of TV film stuff, um, some stuff on Nickelodeon. I was almost on a Nickelodeon show. I like they flew me out to LA to like screen test. Um, and the show actually, the pilot did premiere, but I did not book. I did not book that show. But that was a cool experience. I was able to have thanks to Scene by and like being being able to like be represented by a big agency in LA. Um, and so I, I was in like the TV film auditioning world for a while. I would say from, cause I did that my sophomore year of high school from my sophomore year of high school onto um, the end, my sophomore year of high school on, I was signed with DDO from my sophomore year of high school till my sophomore year of college actually, I think. Yeah, cause I, I, left, I left DDO like, like 
right before yeah yeah I was I was with him for like three years and so that three years was like a lot of tv film auditioning and stuff and I also started I I I was auditioning for Dear Evan Hansen that whole time while I was with GDO I would be in every time that they were looking for replacements because I remember my first audition I sent him even before I signed with DDO. But I was like, I, I kind of was like, I want to like work very quickly. I was like, I want to do this. Like, let's do this. So my mom was like, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Because I, as a child, think I could have been a Broadway kid had my mom or my dad like been like, yeah, let's get this kid to an audition. So this was like her like being like, oh yeah, you could have done that uh, too late. Now let's, let's, let's work on this. Yeah. I hope I'm not talking in circles. I feel like I'm like saying such random words. You're good. Um, but yeah, that yeah, that's kind of that story. Yeah, you can still be a Broadway kid, but like Broadway, like yeah, like, adult you know. kid. Yeah. yeah. I'm I guess the Dear Evan Hansen revival. Like Sam Premack was on when it closed, <laughs> and I was like, okay, I need a revival now. Thank you, <sighs> Sam. Love Sam. It was this actually. Me replacing Sam was actually the craziest thing because I always heard about, so Sam, fun fact, um, is, was good friends or is good friends with somebody I grew up doing theater with and then ended up going to CCM with like, like for like the most random turn of events. She was always the person I looked up to in theater and she was like, my friend Sam Premax and Dear Evan Hansen. Um, and then I went to school and I met a friend that he grew up with as well named Sarah, they grew up doing theater together. And so I got to replace two of my really good friends, friend, and now he's my friend. And so it's like this really crazy, That's like, crazy. Ah. Also, this so, is super special because this is the 70th episode of The Inspiration Show. And Matteo Luzcano was on as the 50th. So yes! all, the, all the big milestones are Evans. I love it. That's exciting. It's Mateo, so fun. Mateo, I got to see him as Evan um, when Dekayla made her Zoe debut. He was, he's incredible. He was I, just, I like have to say that. Everybody I've ever seen play this role has truly like I been know. incredible. I like don't have a favorite of them. Like everybody, whoever I've seen the most recently is my favorite. Same, like, it's so, I can't pick. It's hard because they get really good people to be in this show. And I, I think they get really, into, that's the really the thing I really appreciate about being here on tour with Anthony Reese and Pierce is that like whoever is on out of the four of us, it's a totally different show. Everybody's yeah. Evan is so individual to them that like if Pierce or Reese are on, I am always in the audience because I have to see that. Do you, are you, I think you're allowed to because I've seen, I think, I don't know who did it, but someone was sitting out in the audience during some of the shows. Can you like go and do that if you're not on? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a thing. They want you to watch the show just so you can also like kind of keep up with what's happening on stage if things are kind of changing a little bit stuff like that okay. if that yeah. happens I'm ditching my seat in Buffalo and you know we'll have some fun <laughs> yeah. yes so you were a part of the HBO Max special homeschool musical class of 2020 so this is so special because I started the inspiration show like at the root of the pandemic so you were a part of yeah. this documentary and you know it kind of talked about the pandemic so what was it like getting to share your art through this medium during the pandemic that was, I, that was the best way I could have asked to like kick off that like phase or chapter of my life. Um, because um, I just started college that year. Um, my, I was moving into college. The day before I left to move into college, I found out I had booked the special. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like was able to capture this really, really cool transitional part of my life through this. Um, through like I still have all the b-roll from the um, when we shot it in my phone and like I have videos of me moving into college and like me meeting my classmates in person for the first time and like all of these moments I look back on like so fondly because they were so pure and like just new to me it was my first time really being an adult like outside of my parents house and I was really thankful I got to capture it there and I also just got to make music with some really cool people I got to work with some really cool people who I'm still like meeting I'm meeting in person for the first time like um one of our music assistants on the show, his name is Benedict. He works, he worked on Mean Girls. He's one of the conductors on Mean Girls. And I met him when I had the stage door because I had a whole bunch of friends in Mean Girls and we were in San Francisco at the same time. And I, we were, we were, we were going to hang out afterwards. And I met Benedict at the stage door. And it was this crazy, like, I never thought I'd meet you in person moment. Um, and I still have not met any of them in person that I did the documentary with. 
just because I went from the documentary sophomore year of school was like this crazy, like, Oh, I'm here at school. Oh, I booked your, Oh, I have to leave. Yep. So, um, yeah. It's like that TikTok. Another one. Thank you. You know, what I'm another one. Thank you. No, that, that <laughs> my second year of college was like that, but it was like good thing, bad thing, good yeah. thing, bad thing, bad thing, good thing, good thing, good thing, bad thing. I love yeah. that. Because you also did the documentary. I think it was not produced, but it was Laura Benanti was involved in yes, that. Yes, Laura Benanti. Yeah. Yeah. And our closing number, actually, fun fact, was waving through a window. <laughs> no way. Oh my God. That's so iconic. I, from that, I will, I'll tell you this story after we're off the air because I don't know if I can share it. After okay. I'm recording, I'll tell you that, remind me to come back and I'll tell you about what happened after okay. the documentary happened. But um, yeah. And I have to ask, because you selected Prey by Sam Smith. So that yeah. was also, like in the root of COVID. So talk to me about why you chose that song because I love that song. Why did I choose that song? Um, I think, I think honestly, because COVID, I was in Jackson, Mississippi, um, part of the pandemic. And I don't know if you are familiar with the area of Mississippi. Um, I don't think you would be, and for good reason. Um, there wasn't very much to do. Um, and I kind of went a little stir crazy. And I was like, I need to get out. I need to go to school now. Um, and I, I needed like release. I needed something new. I needed something different. And in the time between having that something different and being stuck at home, like sheltering in place, Prey was really how I felt. So it was between that and a Stevie Wonder song that I also recorded for this actually. And then we ended up going with Prey and shooting Prey. Um, I love yeah. that. It's so special, you know, when music really conveys a message that you're feeling. And, you know, just to sing that song to like express your emotions, it's so special. And I love how music does that. Music is so powerful. I like, I truly, if you, if you ever see me in public, I probably have these headphones on blasting music at full blast. Cause it just, it, oh, yeah. moves, it moves you, it motivates you. We'll what do the we headphones challenge in Buffalo. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have so much I, fun. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This is gonna you. be fun. So you are currently studying at the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music, working on your BFA in musical theater. So while studying, have there been any life lessons or lessons about the industry that you've learned that you now carry with you? Um. So I I am still very much in school. I go to school every day on Zoom. I'm like in the room with my class on Zoom. So I'm like in acting class. We have acting class three times a week, two hours a day. No um, way. I didn't know that. Yeah. Acting. We have acting three times a week, two hours a day. We have, we have like our schedules are stacked. Like, <laughs> yep. That year, I, I, was, I was getting my schedule ready for senior year, looking online if I am to go back. Cause I don't know what's happening with that. Um, but I was looking at my schedule and I would start, I would start the day with eight 30 ballet and my longest break that day would be 30 minutes long for lunch. And I would go until 10 PM if I was in a show. Oh my God with like two or three 30 minute breaks in between there. Like they like, school really got me ready for like the hustle and bustle of what like pounding the pavement, hitting the pavement in New York is gonna be like auditioning and just like honing while you're auditioning. That is what I'm really thankful for school for because I feel like all the tools I've had in audition rooms, I don't think I had before I went to school. Like we literally have a class in school called audition techniques that we have to take two years in a row where Goodness. all we do is we go in for shows we go in our our teacher's an old casting director from new york and he has all his old packets and packets from shows that are like seeing people now and he'll like be like you're going in for this and then he'll send us in for roles that are right for us roles that aren't right for us and we kind of have to maneuver it because in reality that's what you do not always going to be going in for like things that you're perfect for but it's about how you like rock the material and work with it um and school also like school um gave me a lot of freedom to like be a musician um and like I music directed the show called Delusion while we were there it's a Harry Houdini musical we did like a project with that I I got to music every time we had like a cabaret or something they were like hey you want to do an arrangement you want to work on this work on that work on that um and there were even chances to like play in the pit had I been there this year oh. um so school really gave me it was, it was, it's just like a, it was a great avenue to just like do things, try things, yeah. fail things, be good at things, figure out how to be better at things. 
Um, and also just gave me like the best group of friends that I could have ever asked for. Like my class is, I like, I don't think, I, I don't think a group as special as them comes along that often. And I mean, like the original like 20 that we have, even though some of them are, some of them are gone, some of them are doing other things. Some of them are also on tour. Um, but that original group of 20 people is I think one of the most special groups of people I will ever encounter in my life. Oh, that's um, so special. And I love that journey. It's incredible. And I, it's, it's something really special about like being in school with this group of people and seeing them grow. Cause like, I still see my, I see my classmates perform and we can't help but think back to COVID year, 2020, when we all started freshman year on Zoom in our vocal coaching. Our large group vocal coaching was taught by this um, guy. I don't know if you knew about the Secret Garden production in LA, but the guy who played Archibald, his name's Derek Davis. Um, he, was our, he was our teacher freshman year. And so he was teaching us like acting through song. And every Friday we had like a big all skate where everybody would sing. So there's moments where you'll like, we had our final performance exams like two weeks ago and I had to do it on Zoom, but I was, I was still there. And I was watching these people perform and I was thinking back to like that mm -hmm. first performance freshman year. And I'm like, you literally are Broadway. Like you could like, I'm, I, my class is one group of people that I have no doubt if they were really auditioning and like trying to like get into things, it would be like this. Like the industry's not ready for them. They're that's so special. And I have to ask, what's it like for you, you know, juggling school with tour and that kind of thing? It's, um, honestly, it, it gives me something to do during the day, something productive to do during the day. Because um, I, I very much come from the school of like, especially my first, I would say like six months of this job when I was just starting school. Um, I would learn things in acting class and then be applying them in the show that like, that weekend or that night if I was on that night. Um, and it, 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 school, school kind of is giving me some, it, it, it keeps giving me something to come back to and to work on. It's cause like, regardless of what I'm doing here in life and like what my job is, I'm still a student at that school and I'm still learning from these folks because they have so much to teach me. Um, and yeah, and we get to just do really cool, fun things that you never would have thought to do. I did it. I presented a scene where I was on zoom and the other guy was in person, but there was also like a recorded video. Like we have to be like our own technicians, like to make things work. The teacher is like, this is what you have to do. This is when you have to present it, make it work. And the making it work is what I think is so special about like doing school. And then I take the make it work and then doing that, make it work like in school and like in practice in school, something goes wrong on stage. I, yeah. I'm mid, just, mid swing I ons. yeah, it's crazy. Cause everyone's been telling me like mid swing ons. I was like, it's yeah, crazy. I had to, I had to call out one show mid show. Cause I, I, I had it. I had, I didn't know I had a really bad acid reflux and oh got to waving. Um, and my voice started refluxing and there was acid on my cords. And so above a certain note, I would like try to sing it, but nothing would come out. Oh um, because when you get acid on your cords, if your cords know how to react, they stop singing so they don't damage themselves. Right. Um, so luckily my body reacted the correct way um, and I had to leave and go to the hospital. Um, Are you okay? But, oh no, the voice was fine. It was oh. just like, I just needed to be on stronger medicine and I didn't know it. Um, but yeah, thank God for Pierce Wheeler because he was there and he stepped in like without, without missing a beat. I felt horrible for having to do that, like putting him in that position, but it's like, it, it, it happens. Like you can like warm up however much you want and like think that you are ready and like it's there and you're about to do it. And then I guess sometimes it just doesn't happen. Yeah. And, it was, but yeah. it was a great learning experience. I'm glad I learned from that. Yeah. yeah. It was, I felt so bad because you know, that it's terrible, but I found it so funny when I was told that one Evan was getting the cast off, the other one was getting it on with all the like blow dryers, you know, trying to get them ready and out for the show. It was so chaotic. And I was like, all this could have been avoided if I'd known I had acid reflux. Yeah. But um, yeah. But that's live theater and that's what that's we do. Live theater, that's life. Yeah. That's what we do. So as of course mentioned, you are currently part of the national tour of Dreven Hansen as you have an alternate. So can you share with us your DEH journey leading up to this point? So, okay. 
it all starts, it all begins my freshman year of high school. I was in computer lab class. My best friend, his name is Jack Sewell. He's not a model in New York, which is crazy to me. Anyways, I listened to the Dear Evan Hansen album for the first time because it just come out like a few weeks ago. I heard waving, I turned to this man. This is, this is I'm gonna do an impression. He goes, whoa, button, Jack, I'm gonna be in this. Um, and then um, I, I submitted a self tape that year, I think um, like two months later. And it's, it's like, it's, it's actually, it's, it's, not, it's not great, but I got a call back from it. And I had my first in-person call back for Gary Hansen in May of 2018 or 2019. I think it's 2018. Cause yeah, it's, I think it's 2018. It had to be, yeah, it was 2018. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah. And um, so from there, every time they had an opening, it'd be like, okay, Jeffrey, come back in. And I'd always get really far, but then they'd be like, I remember my first time, um, my first time I, I don't know if I got to finals, but I know I, got, I had a call back and then I was leaving out and they were like, how old are you again, by the way? And I said, I, I just turned 16 that day. I was like, no, I just turned 15 that day. Oh I was my like, God, so like my uh, age now. Oh my yeah. God. Oh my God. Yeah. I was like 15, but it was around the same time that Andrew had gotten it too. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try it out. Um, and so I was just in and out for that show all of high school. I think I flew to New York. My mom, my mom has a count. Like she has a list of how many times I flew to New York for like auditions and callbacks for that show. But, you know, I kept going in. I remember, I think I got pretty close, like right before the pandemic happened. And then the pandemic happened. And I was like, oh, well, that's not happening for a second. So I'm going to work on it, learn how to sing it some more. Um, and uh, during the during pandemic, I'm in the pandemic, I'm in the pandemic. Okay. Pandemic goes by. Um, 2020 goes by. Summer of 2021. Okay. I'm sorry. This is a really long story. Summer of 2021. Though, hey, we're remounting Broadway and tour. We're looking for replacements. We need replacements. I'm like, shusha, okay. So this is also while I'm working at this camp that I was telling you that the Sharon Miles, my number one inspiration mentor lady, um, this is while I'm working in the summer camp. So I'm sitting in the kitchen and me, my best friend, Aluchi, who I also grew up to theater with, she goes to Michigan, go blue. She's so freaking fierce. Um, but um, I'm like sitting on my phone and I get an email from the casting director and it's like, hey, Jeffrey, um, we want to see you for callback, Evan Jared cover. And I was like, Cool, cool, cool. Jared? So, really? yeah, Evan, yeah, I cover Jared actually still to this day. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing I do. Yeah. Um, this. Yeah, I've never been on for Jared, but I do. I do know the track of Jared. I know how to play Jared. Um, you know this. Yeah, but um, no, 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 no. It wasn't Evan. It was Evan Connor. It was an Evan Connor cover. Wait, that's that one shocks me even more. Yeah. Well, actually. I feel like that made more sense to me than Evan Jared at that point in time in my life, at least. Cause I had really long hair and I used to paint my nails all the time. I was like, okay, that vibe tracks. Anyways, so I'm so I- I'm interrupting your story. I got too excited. Oh, no, it's fine. No, no. Cause that like, yeah, no. Cause I'd be forgetting I cover Jared. And then, and then I get the rehearsal schedule for Jared. And it's like, oh, I'm Jared this week in rehearsal. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I did my first call back in the lighting booth of the theater that I was at while the kids were doing summer camp, I was like, hey, I need to leave for like 30 minutes to do this. And I did a Zoom work session and then I sang through everything. I acted through everything. They were like, okay, great. We'll be in touch. Email me like a couple hours later. They're like, hey, we want to see you again. Um, but before we see you, we want to hear you sing. Like I, they, they had me like recording all these tapes like of just certain clips of songs. And then like they would call me back on Zoom. And then I didn't, Get it. I got a call from the guy in casting right after I had come back to school. It was the first day of school, sophomore year. And our, the casting director was like, hey, um, they're going with somebody else right now. But chin up, basically, was basically what it was like. Um, and so that semester I was like, okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, gonna stick to me, gonna keep working on it. And I got into this program called the Link Program. Um, and at the Link Program, uh, we had a whole bunch of people that came and did like these workshops with us, um, including Michael Greif, um, including Danny Sharon, who is our associate 
director and somebody else and Kevin Metzger Timpson, who uh, was casting the show at that point in time. And so, of course, I was getting up and I was singing for forever. I was like, I'm going to sing Evan Hansen stuff. And then a uh, couple months later, uh, well, the day of our showcase, I got an email that was like, hey, we want to see how your progress is on all the material. Uh, how about you come in New York? And I was like, no, I'm actually back in Ohio now. Uh, what can we do? And so I do a Zoom session. After that Zoom session, they're like, OK, come to New York next week. I go to New York the next week. Um, I go into my work session. Um, surprisingly enough, Alex Lackamore was there. He was oh the one running the music God. work section and um, not um, our, our regular like music supervisor because I guess something had happened, like something had come up. So I do this like final work session with Alex Lackamore and I sang through all the Evan material. I hadn't done material for any of the other tracks because I was still in, I, I don't know what I was in for at that point, but I know I was still in for covering, I think but I hadn't done any Jared or like Connor material in like a year, like since that Zoom call back the year before. Mm -hmm. And so I did, I sang through all the Evan stuff with him and I left, this is also fun fact, while they were auditioning for Bad Cinderella. So I'm in this room doing my Evan like final and Bad Cinderella is like, like callbacks in the hallway. Like I'm talking like I saw Carly Carmelo walking in as I was walking out. Love her. She eats. I have to see Bad Cinderella, actually. I really want to see it. Um, but um, that happened, and I walk out, and I was like, it was it was good, but it was hard because it was a work session. So it was like me singing like the end of Waving like 12 times, or like that the end ending. of whatever, like a crap ton of times, until I like, couldn't sing it anymore, basically. They were just trying to see, I guess, like where I was. Yeah. And so I was like, I left, I was like, I don't know if I want this or not, but I'm going to go back, and then so that next Friday, they announced that morning who was going to be Evan for the next year on Broadway. And at that point, I thought I was in for replacing on Broadway. Um, and they announced that uh, Sam and Ben Ross and all of them were going to come in and like when they would be playing Evan. And I was like, oh, I didn't book it. OK, great. And so I took a day off of class. I was like, this is my mental health day because we got like two mental health days here. I was like, I'm going to take a mental health day. This is going to be my time to like more not getting this. And then 30 minutes later, <laughs> oh my, my God. Agent, like, I get a text from my agent. He's like, Hey, are you awake? Are you, he's like asking me all these cryptic questions. Are you awake? Are you alone? Is anybody near you? Where are you right now? And I'm like, uh, Your TikTok, right? Where you can't talk about it. Right, right. Yes. I'm like, I'm alone. What's going on? He was like, calling you now and so I answer the phone I'm like oh this is him telling me I didn't book okay cool cool, cool. I'm just gonna have this call I'm gonna cry a little bit and I'll be done it'll be it's like, cool yeah. anyway, so I answer the phone I'm like hey what's up he's like okay are you sitting down and I was like no should I be because like I like truly convinced myself that that work session I had was the worst work I'd ever done in my life and that I did not book and he was like well um you're gonna be in Dear Van Hansen we don't know what company yet but they want you, so you're gonna be in it. And so this was in February. So I booked it in February and they didn't know what company I was in at that point. And then I think a week later they were like, yeah, let's put them on tour. And I also didn't know what my position was at the time because um, I hadn't gotten a contract. But when I signed my contract initially, it was for just Evan Understudy, Jared Understudy. Um, and I started voice lessons for that show around, for the, for the show around that time. And then, in April, I got my agent called me again. And he was like, hey, how would you feel about if you were to play Evan every week? And I'd be like, that'd be great. Why would you ask that? He's like, oh, that's what you're doing now. And I was like, oh, <laughs> cool. But yeah, that's kind of my story. It was, uh, it took a long time to get here, but I think it happened right when it was supposed to. Oh, I love that. That's such a special journey. Love it. And I feel like I, all the like people along the way that I met and like, like learned from have just I will always look back like the good and the bad of like all the stresses of tour I'll always look back on this and be like wow this is a goal I wanted and I worked for it and I worked really hard and eventually it happened you know you killed it you're here ah uh, yay are we ready for some quick DEH rap rapid fire let's do it I'm so excited okay. so favorite part most challenging part about portraying Evan okay my favorite part 
uh, one of my favorite parts of the show is to break in a glove with John Hempill because he is an yes. acting master class. He is he is one of the, the most. Bill said this too. He he like I've learned so much about acting just from watching him on stage. I mean, I have to say, like, incredible, and I can't wait to see it. But here's my thing, and I need to get your input on this. To break in okay. a glove, it hits live. I love it. It's amazing. But when it's on the cast album, it's amazing. I love it. But when I'm listening to it, I find myself maybe skipping it. Same? Okay. Okay. So we're both. I, I used to do that. I used to do that with glove and disappear. But now I get to disappear in the shot and I'm like. I love disappear. In the I love disappear. My favorite thing about tour though, is you guys in the dressing rooms during you will be found. <laughs> <laughs> no. no because in reality us in the dressing rooms during you'll be found is everybody on their laptop like this <laughs> i love it i love yeah. you guys where are we at oh okay you'll be found okay i gotcha I yeah, love no, that's that. That. <laughs> so your favorite song and favorite scene from the show favorite song is to sing for forever i have to say because that was the first song i learned how to sing um after my voice changed um so it's always really special to me um and favorite scene um i oh, what is my favorite scene um they're all so good I can't pick they're all so good i really 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 like doing the scene before the you'll be found reprise mm -hmm. um with alana with mickey especially since like it's very special um sharing the stage with mickey um because we're the only two black people in the show, like period. So just like um, having this moment on stage where we're both so vulnerable and broken, sometimes I'm like, look at us go, we're eating, we're doing, doing the thing. Um, and I also really, just every time I'm on stage with Pablo, it's a hoop. Yeah. yeah. And I have to ask, cause I love asking all the Evans this and getting different answers. Hardest song to sing. It changes every time so when i first started um my first ever show somebody bootlegged my waving and it's still on youtube um yeah and i was still like kind of figuring out and anxiety if you didn't know like tenses everything up in your body so um waving was definitely the hardest like my first month but then i figured out how to sing it and that, that was cool for forever is kind of deceiving because you, you have to sing so low yeah. like like the high notes, like you get ready for the show with the high notes in mind, like the high notes are gonna be there. It's the low notes and waving and, and for forever have so many. And it's like you're literally- range everywhere. It's like literally like you're a baritone at certain parts of the show and then you're an alto at other parts. It's like, mm -hmm. please pick a range, Evan. Pick one. Um, but I would say the hardest song to sing because emotionally and like at that point in the show. And also it's the longest time we go without going off stage for like, or having, like a sip of water or something is for well, yeah. words fail part two i never let them see the worst of me the hardest thing to sing ever in the world to me and that's the one that gets me the most and so yeah there have been many a time where i have cracked or i have maybe not built it as loud as i could have but it always has come out so yeah. you know as long as you're doing it and then for our last rapid fire what do you enjoy most but about doing the show and touring with the show um, I enjoy the most, the thing I enjoy most about the show is um, getting able to spread a message and also getting to be an example for people that like mental health has more than just one look of like of, of the type of person it can affect. Um, because I think a lot of times, like at least in the black community, it's, 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 um, wow, my stutter just came back. Um, in the black community, um, um, mental health is often brushed over. It's not really something we address. We kind of push past it. It's like, um, it's kind of taboo to discuss. And so I think it, it, there's something very special and very poignant to be said about like sitting down at the theater and seeing people that look like me in the audience and knowing that this message is going to hit a little different for them because it's probably a conversation that they're going to have in the car that they're, they're going to go home and they've never talked about this with their parents. Um, so that, that is my favorite part. The most challenging part I think is um, being away from the people I love, like outside of the show, because I, I truly do care about everybody I work with. 
Um, but it's, it's, it's not the same sometimes as like being with your family or like your friends that you have that you also don't work with because we're also coworkers. So there's like, there's like a line sometimes where you're like, okay, maybe I need to go home, hang out by myself a little bit. Love y'all though. It's all love. Um, and yeah, it, it's also just so fun to finally be able to perform this role. Um, and like do it like it's also just really special whenever I have like fam at whenever I have family or friends in the audience especially those that have helped me like get to this point like when I was in Memphis which was the closest to where I was to home um this guy named Hayden who was an intern at the theater um that I used to work at he helped me shoot my first ever self tapes for the show um and he came and he was in the same audience as the Jack Sewell guy that I turned to and said that I was going to be in the show and all my teachers that I've ever had in like high school and middle school that they all came down. So like being able to perform this show for people I love has also been a great highlight. That's so special. My favorite thing is when you message me and you're like, I'm on for these two. I'm like, yay, I was so, so happy. That's, I'm also very thankful for like the opportunity to get to do this every week. That is that is one thing I like, I, I can't brush over just because we all put in so much work um, to like play this role and like, and like be able to do it um and i'm just i'm very thankful i get to do it as often as i do it's such a special show because like if we were to touch on everything that the show brings awareness to like we'd be here for hours but it's so so special just you know to see that represented on stage is just so beautiful to see yeah and and and, and to see it see the see the message still hit the same that it did the day the show came out like to see people like weeping at the exact same parts every time yeah see them laughing at this like it just um the show is so much about community yeah. um and it really makes you want to hug your neighbor after you're done and I think that's that's the type of show we need especially like coming back from the pandemic and being so distant and apart and separated um and I wish it wasn't going anywhere but sadly oh, we're gonna keep waving all of us and, and we're gonna and we're gonna keep it in our hearts like that's the thing. I wrote my, oh, spoiler for everyone watching. I wrote my goodbye letter to the show that I'm going to post after we take all our pictures in Buffalo. And it's just, you know, because like I first saw the show when I was 11 and I'm going to be 15 mm -hmm. when I see it in Buffalo. And like wow. making a little pun here, but like if I could tell 11 year old me how much the show was going to mean to me and like the, the small involvement that I get to have with the cast and, you know, the special relationships that, and the incredible people that the show has brought into my life. It's so special. And, you know, to say goodbye to it's going to be sad, but. But you know what, you know what, one thing I will say that will like, I hopefully bring you a little piece is that like the older you get, the show will just keep meaning that much to you. Yep. And, like different parts will mean more to you, yep. you know? So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I just want to say that. So yeah, looking back on everything you have achieved in this industry, what advice would you give your younger self entering the industry? Um, that feels funny to say to my younger self because I feel like I am my younger self right now. Um, and I'm kind of like learning everything as I go. Like this job is, I've, I've had to learn everything on the job. I, this is the first role I've ever played that was a lead in a two-act musical because I didn't really do those. I was always in like the Broadway junior shows at home. And then I went to school and I was in the ensemble and all the shows because I was an underclassman. And then all of a sudden to, to like be pushed into like, oh, I have to leave this show twice a week. Um, was it, it, it still continues to be like something I have to be very conscious and cognizant about in life and like how I take care of myself and how I live it. But I would just tell myself to like keep being patient and to keep like listening to my gut because every gut feeling I've ever had, Allison, I don't know if I said this, but I feel like I am a little bit psychic. I manifest things so hard for people and then they come true. Like Morgan, when Morgan booked Jagged Little Pill, I saw Jagged in previews like before the pandemic. It's coming and I to Toronto her. next year. I'm so excited. Okay, so yes! I'm going to see it for the first time. I'm so excited. It's, it's, it's great. It's great. It's a great show. But when I saw it in previews, I called Morgan that night. I know Morgan for maybe a year at that point. And I was like, you're going to be Frankie and Jagged Little Pill. Lo and behold, two years later, I got a call. And she was like, I'm going to be in Jagged Little Pill. Um, and I've had like a few friends that have like booked things. And I literally made like my friend Janet in six manifested that for her. I'm just, so I would tell myself to like, keep the good vibes up, keep, keep rooting for the people that root for you and keep cool. Like keep, keep, keep community up. 
because I think community is so important, important, important. I love it. Um, important when it when it comes to just like being in this industry, yep. and and like knowing that community can be more than just the people that work in this industry as well. Definitely, I love that. Like great trick and state. I don't know. Yeah. Jeffrey, thank you so much for joining me on The Inspiration Show. This conversation was so special and will be one that I will cherish for forever. You are beyond incredible and it was such an honor to speak with you. Thanks for inspiring me. Thank you for inspiring me. I'm so excited. <laughs>